In the world of bodybuilding, few figures have inspired as much thought, controversy, and lasting influence as Mike Menser. He was not only a Mr. Universe champion and top-tier Olympia competitor, but also one of the most intellectual voices the sport has ever produced. Menser became famous for his heavy-duty system of high-intensity training, which emphasized short, infrequent, but very intense workouts. During his competitive career in the late 1970s, he was a strong advocate of using forced repetitions and negatives, techniques designed to push the muscles past the point of positive failure. But later, as a personal trainer throughout the 1990s, Menser's philosophy evolved. He no longer recommended that his clients use forced reps and negatives in every workout. Instead, he cautioned that while such techniques had their place, they were too demanding to be applied constantly. In this video, we'll explore why Menser once embraced forced reps and negatives, why he later pulled back, and how his mature philosophy offers important lessons about intensity, recovery, and progress. Forced Reps and Negatives Explained Before analyzing Menser's perspective, let's define the two techniques at the heart of this discussion. Forced repetitions occur when a lifter pushes to muscular failure. Then, a training partner provides just enough help to allow a few extra reps beyond that failure point. The lifter is still working hard, but the partner's assistance keeps the set going. Negatives, or eccentric training, involve focusing on the lowering portion of a lift. Since muscles are stronger eccentrically than concentrically, this allows the lifter to use more weight than they could otherwise handle. A partner may help lift the weight, then the trainee slowly lowers it under control. Both techniques are extremely intense. They extend the time a muscle is under tension, go beyond the body's natural limits, and create massive amounts of microtrauma. In theory, this additional stress should produce faster growth. During the 1970s, while preparing for contests such as the Mr. Olympia, Menser incorporated forced reps and negatives into virtually every workout. His philosophy was simple. If training to failure produced results, then pushing beyond failure should produce even better results. At this point in his career, Menser was known for workouts that were brutally short but devastatingly intense. His reliance on forced reps and negatives fit perfectly with his vision of maximum work per unit of time. And it worked. For him. Menser built one of the most admired physiques of his era winning the 1978 Mr. Universe with the first-ever perfect score and placing in the Olympia against legends like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Frank Zane. But his views would soon change. When Menser retired from competition and shifted into personal training, he began working with everyday clients at Gold's Gym and beyond. It was here that he encountered a problem. Despite carefully following his heavy-duty prescriptions, Many of his clients were not gaining strength or muscle as expected. Their progress was irregular at best, stalled at worst. Menser ruled out the obvious issues, too many sets, too much frequency. He already had his clients doing only one set per exercise and never more than two sets per muscle group. But progress was still lacking. Eventually, he realized the culprit, the constant inclusion of forced reps and negatives. When I first started training people several years ago, I had them all doing forced reps and negative, negatives every set of every workout, and almost nobody was gaining satisfactorily. That's when I came to understand much more clearly just how demanding high-intensity training really is, that the body has a strictly limited recovery ability or adaptive capacity. You've got to be very careful. This was the turning point. Menser began to see that techniques which had propelled his own development were too overwhelming for most clients. Steroids, natural trainees, and the recovery gap. One of the key differences between Menser's competitive years and his time as a trainer was anabolic steroids. 
Like virtually all professional bodybuilders of his era, Menser used anabolic steroids during his competitive career. These substances dramatically enhance recovery ability, allowing the body to tolerate and rebound from far greater levels of training stress. It's likely that this pharmacological edge allowed Menser to thrive on forced reps and negatives without succumbing to overtraining. But when he became a trainer in the 1990s, most of his clients were natural athletes. They were not using steroids, and for them, the constant use of forced reps and negatives quickly became disastrous. Instead of stimulating growth, it left them exhausted and stalled. Even with a week of rest, many could not return to baseline strength. Their reserves were simply drained. This wasn't just Menser's observation, it was borne out by scientific evidence. A 1993 study in the Journal of Physiology examined the effects of negative-only training on recovery ability. In this experiment, men and women aged 22 to 32 performed three sets of preacher curls consisting entirely of eccentric or negative-only repetitions. The results were dramatic. The day after training, subjects experienced a 35% loss of strength. Even after 10 days, their biceps had only recovered to about 70% of baseline strength. Researchers concluded that full recovery from this kind of eccentric stress could take five to six weeks, up to three months in some cases. As the authors summarized, quote, muscle strength declined by almost 40% after the exercise and recovery was only slight 10 days later, the half-time of recovery appeared to be as long as five to six weeks, close quote. This finding was consistent with what Menser saw in practice. His natural clients were not lazy or undisciplined. They were simply unable, biologically, to recover from such extreme techniques. The lesson was clear. What worked for a steroid-enhanced professional could not be applied wholesale to the average drug-free trainee. The Nature of Overtraining Menser's recognition of these limits led him to refine his philosophy of overtraining. For him, overtraining wasn't just training too long or too often. It was any exercise that exceeded the least amount necessary to stimulate growth. As he wrote, quote, Overtraining, by definition, means performing any more exercise than the precise amount required for optimal results. Exercising beyond that point is not merely wasted effort. It is counterproductive. It is that which militates against your realizing optimum progress. Close quote. The body has a limited reserve of recovery resources. Spend too much of those resources surviving the workout itself, and little remains for the actual growth process. Forced reps and negatives, while powerful, often tip the scale into this counterproductive zone. Precision and the least amount necessary. Menser's mature philosophy revolved around one guiding principle. Find the least amount of exercise required to stimulate growth and do no more. What we're looking for here is the precise, the least amount of exercise required. The logical place to start, even if you're skeptical, is with the least amount possible. One set per exercise and never more than two sets per muscle is all that's needed. He often emphasized that bodybuilding had been asking the wrong question all along. We've been asking the wrong, wrong question all these years. The question should not have been how much exercise do we need, but how little do we require. This was a profound shift from the more is better mindset. Rather than assuming more sets, more reps, and more intensity always led to more growth, Menser approached training with surgical precision. Start small, add only if necessary. The Demands of High-Intensity Training Mike came to appreciate more deeply over time just how demanding high-intensity training really is. For every slight increase in intensity, there has to be a disproportionate decrease in volume. This high-intensity stuff places a demand on the body of an order that is phenomenal. Daily activities barely register as stress on the body, but a single high-intensity set is like launching a vertical line of effort that goes off the page, out the door, down the street, and around the block. 
When training already imposes such monumental stress, adding forced reps and negatives to every set was like pouring gasoline on a fire. Selective use of forced reps and negatives. Importantly, Menser never abandoned forced reps and negatives entirely. He continued to believe they had value, but only when used sparingly and strategically. He advised, quote, I have found with my personal clients, however, that including forced and or negative reps at the end of every positive set leads quickly to overtraining. So I have my clients use them on a random basis. On some sets, they'll do one or so forced reps at the end of a set of positives. On other sets, they do one negative at the end of a set of positives. Close quote. This balanced approach acknowledged the potential benefits of advanced techniques while protecting against the risk of long-term overtraining. Menser also recognized that recovery ability is not uniform. Genetics, lifestyle, and physiology all play a role in determining how much intensity and volume a person can handle. There is a wide range of variation among individuals I'm seeing with regards to recovery ability and ability to tolerate intense exercise. What, what the individual has to work with is the application. Everybody needs intense contractions to stimulate growth. What the individual has to work with is just how much volume and frequency he can tolerate. For some, forced reps and negatives might be useful tools employed occasionally. For others, they might be counterproductive even in moderation. The key was to observe results and adjust accordingly. Conclusion the story of Mike Menser's evolving view on forced reps and negatives is really the story of his intellectual growth as a bodybuilder and teacher. As a competitor, he embraced these techniques wholeheartedly, thriving on them in part because of the steroid-enhanced recovery capacity he possessed. But as a trainer of mostly natural clients, he realized that such methods were simply too destructive for long-term progress. His observations were later supported by science, Eccentric overload can delay recovery not for days, but for weeks, sometimes months. Menser never dismissed force reps and negatives outright. Instead, he placed them in their proper context, occasional tools to be used carefully, and always with full respect for the body's limited recovery reserves. Ultimately, his philosophy distilled into one timeless lesson. Seek the least amount of exercise required to stimulate growth and do no more. The question should not have been, how much exercise do we need, but how little do we require? In a culture where more is better remains a mantra, Menser's wisdom stands as a reminder that progress is not about doing the most, but about doing precisely what is necessary.